welcome to this week's News Bulletin Roundup at the International News Channel. Let's take a look at the headlines. Three victims are dead and two injured in a mass shooting in the Montreal apartment complex on Monday, August 2nd. Afghan President Ashraf Ghani blames the U.S. troops' rapid removal from Afghanistan for the worsening violence in the country. Indians across the globe celebrate August 5th as Kashmir Day. Two people traveling from the United States to Toronto have been fined $20,000 each for providing false information related to COVID-19 to Canadian officials. China accuses Australia of vaccine sabotage. A Belarusian activist has been found hung in a suspected homicide in the Ukraine. The U.S. employers remain divided about whether to enforce vaccination on employees. Canadian government endorsed COVID-19 vaccine mixing could cause international travel difficulties for millions of Canadians. To begin with the news of this week, a series of shots were fired in a Montreal apartment building. These shots have left three dead so far and two additional victims are injured. As it stands, police are awaiting the news of whether these individuals will survive from the attack. Quebec Premier Francois Legault has assured Quebecers that they are safe and has expressed condolences to the families of these victims. Nevertheless, the question of who committed these horrendous crimes remains unclear. In other news, Afghanistan's President Ashraf Ghani blames American troops for leaving Afghanistan so urgently, resulting in an increase of violence in the country. Currently, the Taliban has taken over large areas of land and districts, as well as several border crossings with other countries. Indians across the world, including the Indian community in Toronto, celebrated August 5th Kashmir Day. The members of the Hindu Forum Canada and the Indo-Canadian Kashmir Forum gathered at Celebration Square Mississauga to celebrate abrogation of Article 370 and 35A in Jammu and Kashmir. The community praised Prime Minister Narendra Modi's step of revoking these two articles two years back. The Indian diaspora in Canada on Thursday commemorated the second anniversary of the abrogation of Article 370 in India's Jammu and Kashmir, hailing the move which withdrew constitutional privileges to the erstwhile state and also bifurcated it into two federal territories. The Indian diaspora in Canada on Thursday commemorated the second anniversary of the abrogation of Article 370 and 35A, a move which withdrew long-standing constitutional privileges to India's erstwhile state of Jammu and Kashmir and also bifurcated it into two federal territories. The members of the Hindu Forum Canada and the Indo-Canadian Kashmir Forum organized a rally in Mississauga to celebrate the move by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi-led government on August 5, 2019, which they said bound the restive Muslim-majority region closer to rest of India. The participants in the rally claimed there has been unprecedented peace and progress and terrorist violence has reduced significantly in Jammu and Kashmir since the historic move. In Kashmir has been a Militants have battled India's rule in Jammu and Kashmir for more than three decades. A revolt it blames Pakistan for having stoked. Islamabad denies this, saying it provides only moral and diplomatic support to the Kashmiri people. In recent COVID-19 news, two travelers from the United States have been charged by Canadian authorities in Toronto for providing false documents as proof of vaccination, lying about the pre-departure COVID-19 tests, refusing to get tested on arrival and failing to stay at a government-approved accommodation upon arrival. Each traveler was fined $19,720. The public health agency has reminded the public that lying about your vaccination status can result in up to $750,000 worth of fines, six months in prison or both. Meanwhile, in China, the government has accused Australia of vaccine sabotage. This follows the pattern of disputes between China and Australia, where the vaccine is the latest topic of contention. Both China and Australia have offered vaccine aid to Papua New Guinea. And the Chinese state-owned media has argued that Australia has been planting consultants in Papua New Guinea to stop the authorization of Chinese-supplied vaccines. However, said Cecilia, 
Australia's Minister of International Development and Pacific has stated that this is not the case. Vitaly Shishov, a Belarusian activist who ran an organization to assist those fleeing from persecution in Belarus, has been found hung in the Ukraine where he was living in exile. The Ukrainian police have launched a murder investigation into his death. According to his friends, the activist had been living in fear after fleeing Belarus and cited feeling like he was being surveilled in the Ukraine after partaking in anti-Belarus government protests. According to some sources, the activist had been warned about the possibility of being kidnapped and killed prior to his death. Though it is unclear what the exact cause of death was, many are speculating that Shishov's death is just one of many results of the brutal crackdown in Belarus under the new president, Alexander Lukashenko. In other COVID-19 related news, various employers are taking different approaches to get their employees vaccinated. President Joe Biden has announced that all federal employees and contractors must be vaccinated or else face weekly testing or lose privileges like work travel. Some, such as Walmart and Amazon, have not required hourly workers to get vaccinated, instead incentivizing vaccination by utilizing bonuses and having on-site access to shots. Moreover, less than 10% of employers will require all employees to get vaccinated. 3.6 million people who received a combination of COVID-19 vaccines in Canada's strategy to quickly immunize as much of the population as possible could face challenges while traveling to some countries. This includes many in the European Union who don't recognize certain vaccines and vaccine combinations. Those with mixed dosages may not be considered fully vaccinated, potentially resulting in the COVID-19 safety measures such as quarantining or testing while entering borders. Cruise lines may also deny boarding to passengers. That's all for today. Keep watching the International News Channel. I'm Julia Cosby.